This video training is designed to review the proper steps for inspecting and maintaining an Interlube AC2 lubrication system, which may be suitable for either a tractor or trailer system installation. In this trailer video, the back of the trailer has been lifted to allow us to videotape the work being performed. You may or may not choose to lift the trailer when performing this maintenance. A multi-line auto grease system on a tandem axle trailer will typically have between 8 to 16 separate lube lines going from the pumping elements to the different lube points on the chassis. There are six different pumping element sizes available, depending upon the grease volume needed for a particular chassis position. Consult a Timken Interlube engineer if there are questions regarding the pumping element selection for your application. The timer setting on the pump is preset from Interlube and generally does not need to be changed. When the trailer is powered, the points will be automatically greased at the preset cycle time. The setting can vary depending on the trailer application, pumping elements, and the motor selection. Adequate lubrication can be achieved with a proper selection of pumping elements and cycle time. To determine the preset cycle time for your application, refer to your lube system documentation. It's ultimately the responsibility of the customer to validate that all grease points are being lubricated properly. To properly inspect an AC2 interlube auto grease system, you'll need to check the line connection to each lube fitting. Inspect the line connection to each pumping element. Check each line for any signs of damage or wear. Inspect and test the pump. Inspect the reservoir and grease level and replace the label if it is peeling or missing. Be sure to wear the required safety gear when performing this work. There are grease lines running to each individual point which include slack adjusters, brake cams, and clevis pins. Inspect the line and fitting connected to each of the lube points to ensure that the lines are firmly secured into the push lock fittings and there are no leaks around the fitting. Reconnect any disconnected lines and replace any leaking or damaged fittings. It's recommended to trim off approximately 3 eighths of an inch of line to remove any chaffed line. Always use tube cutters to ensure a straight cut and a good fit when reconnecting the line to the grease fitting. Also, make sure that the line is long enough to avoid pulling it too tight. Next, look for signs of fresh grease to confirm that grease is being pumped to each fitting. You may have to reposition some lines that are hanging or making unwanted contact with other chassis components. Worn or damaged lines should be repaired or replaced. A nice feature of the Interlube Multi-Line system is that each of the lube points has its own separate line so that a damaged line will not impact the rest of the system. At the pump manifold, each line has a numbered yellow sleeve where it connects to the pumping element. This corresponds to the sleeve number at the opposite end where the line connects to the grease fitting. Check each pumping element for any loose connections, damage, or grease leakage. Be sure to reconnect any loose lines to the corresponding pumping element and replace any leaking or damaged pumping elements with the same color code that is being removed. It's recommended to trim off approximately 3 eighths of an inch of line to remove any chaffed line. Always use tube cutters to ensure a straight cut and a good fit when reconnecting the line to the pumping element. Also, make sure that the line is long enough to avoid pulling it too tight. Once all of the lines and fittings have been checked, inspect and test the pump. Confirm that the trailer is powered and that the solid green indicator light on the top of the pump is illuminated. If no green light is on, First verify that the 1 amp fuse in the front terminal box or inline fuse holder is OK. If the green light is still not on, test the wiring to the pump to verify that power is being supplied to the pump. Once power is confirmed, push the manual override button and hold for 3 seconds. Then verify that the paddle inside the pump is turning. The green light will flash at a rate of one flash per second as the paddle makes a slow three-minute rotational cycle. If the light is flashing and the paddle is not turning, then the motor needs to be replaced. For this demonstration, 
we'll remove and replace both the motor lid assembly and the reservoir. First, disconnect the lubrication lines and remove the bolts from the mounting plate. Next, disconnect the power cord from the lid assembly. The lid assembly is often supplied with a weather pack connector for ease of removal and installation. In this example, there was a continuous electrical connection which was cut. A weather pack connector will be added during reinstallation of the replacement lid. The motor can be replaced by unscrewing the pump lid and then removing the motor cover underneath the lid. Inspect the motor markings to ensure that the replacement motor speed is the same as was originally supplied for the application. If you prefer, you can replace the complete lid assembly, which includes both the motor and circuit board. In this case, you'll need to identify both the motor and circuit board markings to determine the correct lid assembly for your application. If replacing a failed or damaged lid assembly, it's recommended that you verify the timer setting on the replacement lid to ensure that it matches your desired setting. Replacement of the reservoir may be necessary if it's damaged from road debris or becomes severely discolored. With the lid assembly removed, we have to clean out the grease and remove the paddle from inside the reservoir. To remove the paddle, first remove a blanking plug or pumping element from the manifold then position the flat blade surface of a screwdriver against the cam. This will lock the camshaft against the screwdriver while you break the paddle free and unthread the paddle in the counterclockwise direction. In doing this, be careful not to make contact with the adjacent pumping unit piston springs. Next, remove the six screws on the bottom to replace the reservoir. During reassembly of the lid, Ensure that the drive adapter shaft is properly seated on the paddle arm before re-securing the lid. Upon reassembly, we're now ready to remount the pump on the trailer. When doing this, pay extra attention to the location of the lubrication lines to ensure that they're reconnected to the proper pumping elements. The lid assembly is often supplied with a weather pack connector attached to the cord, along with a mating weather pack connector for ease of installation. In this example, we've attached the mating connector to the existing cord coming from the power supply. The reservoir is filled through the Zerk fitting or hydraulic quick fill located below the pump manifold. Wipe off the fitting to ensure a good connection. It may be helpful to power the pump and press the manual override button to run the pump when refilling the reservoir. This will enable the grease to be more evenly distributed. You may have to press the override button a few times to keep it running during the filling process since it operates in three minute cycles. Be sure to stay below the max fill line to avoid overfilling the reservoir. Do not fill through the top flip cover as this may result in contamination to the components causing premature system failure. Here are the common grease grades with the corresponding low-end temperature range. Generally, you would use an NLGI number 1, 0, or 00 in colder climates, with prolonged temperatures below 10 degrees Fahrenheit. The NLGI 000 is used in extreme low temperatures, down to minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit. A good year-round grease grade for southern regions is NLGI number 2. It's very important to have a label with a max fill line on the reservoir. Over time, the label can peel away, caused by exposure to sun, moisture, and chemicals. When that happens, completely remove the old label and thoroughly clean the area where the new label will be applied. We recommend using denatured alcohol or other suitable cleaning solution. Apply a new label with a max fill line positioned about one inch from the top of the reservoir. Performing these basic inspection and maintenance procedures on your Interlube AC2 trailer chassis lubrication system will help keep everything in top operating condition. For your reference, here is a list of replacement part numbers for the Interlube AC2 chassis lubrication system. Please verify the motor and circuit board markings on the existing unit to ensure that the correct replacement parts are provided. You can also contact Interlube directly for further assistance with identifying or replacing any component parts.